I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board for Monday, November 17th. We have a fairly short agenda tonight. Um, the first item is the discussion about the draft master plan. And then at 7.30, we have another item for discussion about Arlington 360 Neighborhood Protection Plan fines and the disbursement of those fines, possibly. So we have uh, Charlie and Bob here from the Master Plan Advisory Committee. If you want to come up and sit with us, if that's more comfortable, that would be great. Sure. We might have some questions for you um, about the master plan itself or the process. We can kind of do this, I thought, as just a free sure. discussion. Um, Charlie is one of the uh, co-chairs of the Master Plan Advisory Committee. And Bob has been there for, I think, every single meeting. No? Almost. Okay. So these are the two guys in the now. For any questions we might have. So, as everybody knows, the process has been going on since... A year and uh, a half now. A year and a half. And we've gone through all the different elements. Do you want to give a little summary of what we've done so far? Sure. Well, this all started with the World Cafe which is a little over two years ago, which was not part of the formal process, but it brought maybe a couple hundred people together in town um, to sort of talk about the vision and what people wanted to see, um, future direction for the town. And then uh, the town put out a request for proposals for a consultant, master planning consultant, and RKG was selected. Actually, at that time, it was Community Opportunities Group. Um, it was selected to perform the work, and Judy Barrett has since moved to RKG Associates, so she has been the consultant that we've been working with, and there have been a series of um, informal meetings, public meetings, interviews, um, Carol can, can tell you how many, but um, I think it's well over probably 50 meetings, and then the subsequent interviews as well with mm -hmm. individuals. We received a lot of input from town residents throughout the entire process. And so now where we stand is after we did a series of working papers on different subject matters, the state prescribes the areas um, that you have to study as part of a master plan coming up with various issues, for example, housing and open space, transportation, land use. Um, and after these series of working papers uh, were completed, we, we heard a lot of input from residents, and the consultant now has gone through the process of synthesizing all that information and putting together a draft master plan. So that's where we stand now. There will be a, a public meeting in January, okay. and right now we're looking for comments on the draft master plan. January 12th is the public hearing that we're going to hold for residents to come and comment on anything on the draft master plan. And that'll be at the town hall auditorium. That'll be at the town hall auditorium. So that'll so be a large meeting. Hopefully. And then what happens after, after that? Do we vote after that, or do we assess it again? After that, we do vote, and I think in that's that same meeting, sorry. recommendation to town meeting. You would probably vote in a subsequent Sub meeting. Subsequent meeting, okay. Subsequent meeting. And there might be. Yeah. Um, you know, a final draft, if, if the board decides uh, that there are some changes with the committee that we go into a final draft, at that point they should be just tweaks, but then that would be what the board votes, and then that would go to town meeting for endorsement. The endorsement is optional. That's something we, we think is important to do. Mm -hmm. It's not in the statute. Yeah, I think that's important to do also. So the next milestone is December 1st which is when input on this first draft is due. December 1st. And that input can be emailed. Uh, there's a, a <coughs> survey monkey that is makes it easy to write your comments if you um but there are also some questions on the survey monkey. Uh, we're also accepting um, hard copy markups as we did with the working papers. Uh, but if, if neither of those is acceptable and email is your favorite mode, I, I don't want to refuse any input on that. The survey monkey's out already. Yes, it is. Oh, if you go to the um, master plan page mm -hmm. of the website, the survey 
is a link on that page to the survey, mm -hmm. as well as um, links to the relevant document, the implementation section, and the plan itself. Um, so that, that's a good place to start. And there's links to Barbara Thornton's articles there. And that is, are there links to the videos of each uh, element's presentation, like when the housing was presented, economic development? Not that I've seen. I don't think they're on that but there page. Are, but there are... They're on ACMI. ACMI yes. has them all. Okay. But they're not on that page. Right. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. I haven't seen them on that master plan page. Yeah. They might be on another... I didn't see them on I don't think they're... I didn't look for them specifically. Yeah. So those might be interesting to hear what some of the public comments were mm -hmm. at that time. And it's a long document. Um, so there are lots of different ways to, to go about digesting this document. Um, you do have copies of the implementation table, and I think that um, each working group is a working group of the committee for each element of the master plan. And right now, they're going over what we received in the draft to review for completeness, for accuracy in the implementation section. Uh, Bob and Charlie are with the Public Facilities and Services Working Group. Uh, we worked together on um, last week. And um, so one of the things you could do is if, if you had any, if, if you've looked at the implementation table and you have any questions about anything you've seen on there, we can talk about that. But more generally, that's kind of really in the weeds, but more generally, some of the kind of headlines that um, we think have come out of this are um, people want exciting and eclectic shopping districts. Uh, the Millbrook is a hidden gem. We have a tree-lined town. One, another head, headline out of the master plan is, I can afford to live in Arlington. That's something people value and they want to maintain. Uh, safer walking for all ages, a great town for seniors, our natural resource jewels, and we've planned for smart growth. And I think on that last one, I think there's a lot of interest that has been expressed through these last couple years for um, clarifying that mixed use is allowed in Arlington and trying to help realize a range of master plan goals through mixed use. And I, I would add uh, growing the town's revenue uh, of fiscal stability in the future That's as well as a major important. role. Very important in the plan. Mm -hmm. And where do we get a hold of those headlines that you got? Right <laughs> the headlines are actually still a work in progress, but I can forward that to you. Hot off the press. <laughs> this, because we, different members of the committee are working on these headlines to try to um, <coughs> convey the themes. That, you know, we, even, even doing that is a little hard because we get very detailed with the mm -hmm. themes, but uh, these were um, the headlines that Sherry Barron on the committee wrote. And they're the ones I thought, she's on the Human Rights Commission, long-term town meeting oh, yeah, member. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's, she's, um, she put these together. So these headlines haven't been ratified by the committee or anything, but it's just an effort we're trying to undertake to communicate and illustrate some of the important um, themes. Mm. Most of those yeah, are positive aspects of the town. What about all the controversial headlines that might come out? Give some examples. Sidewalks. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's more things that surprised you. Yeah. Um, actually, nothing really surprised me. Okay. Uh, I, I was really taken in by all the, the variety of things that people were commenting on. And uh, they, they really did put a lot into what the, they came back, the feedback we got from them. Uh, I'm not sure if I were on the outside, I'd be participating to the same extent. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, there are quite a few people that really have a lot of interest in this thing. And uh, no, but the, uh, no, not, not, nothing really did. Uh, but that 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 was one that kind of kept coming out all the time about the walkability tied in with the sidewalks and and the park and the, everything else that goes with it. So. Each element in the draft has an issues and opportunities mm -hmm. section. So uh, you know we can just jump to one. I'm just, this is random. I'm not saying this one is especially controversial, but like, let's go to economic development issues and opportunities on page 76.
So let's, uh, this one isn't very controversial, but it's like, how do you handle this? The forecasted increase in local employment could translate into the potential need for 160,000 square feet of office space, 50,000 square feet of industrial flex space, and 76,000 square feet of retail commercial space. Do we have it? it, you know, it is the space we have now adequate in its condition and its um, square footage? So there are some things that, based on our forecasts, will we meet the forecasts? Um, there are also some things that we, we have to strike a balance. Uh, we, we know that we all want to expand the tax base. Uh, when we did the visual preference survey, the in the Town Hall Auditorium, the, the do you like this or that, mm -hmm. uh, we know that people have expressed uh, an interest in allowing somewhat taller buildings, but not too tall. So will that trigger enough redevelopment to make a difference in expanding our tax base? That's one of the controversial items that I was speaking of. When, when you say increasing density, and we had a large discussion for the economic development presentation about what that means and what people in town perceive that as. And does extra height necessarily bring something bad or something good? Does mixed use development bring something bad or bring something good? And the visual preference survey, I think, helped with some of that to show what can be done well in commercial centers with higher density. We have mixed use now in Arlington, but a lot of what we have in mixed use predates our current zoning bylaw. Yeah, and it's some of our nicer buildings, mm -hmm. like above the theater, right in the center of East Arlington, in Capitol Square. Yeah, some of the mixed in use. In the Heights. And in the Heights, some of the mixed use. Some kind of the signature buildings. So if people keep in mind those examples when they, <coughs> when they hear the word density. Mm -hmm and mixed use. I hope that that question comes up and that can be explained if people are hesitating. Because that's a big one for the town. If we don't start to infill and add density, we're never going to bring in money. There also seems to be interest in having design guidelines so that there is more predictability, not just for the builder, but for the abutters and for mm -hmm. people who right. live in the town. Well, they'll know these. This is our palette. For example, this is, these are the design guidelines for different, different areas in the commercial districts. Um, so that predictability, if if you can match some predictability with the redevelopment, then we can we have a better chance of uh, realizing some of the objectives of the master plan. What what I heard in terms of the density, height, and things like that. I think a lot of people envision Mass Ave looking like a, a tunnel, a canyon, yeah, canyon. Like and you know, and I think you know, design guides a step back uh, kind of would, would take away a lot of that fear, <coughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where I want to go higher. And higher. I'm curious, uh, as as you've gone through this process, I, I know one thing that I've heard again and again is parking. Right. And, and it's got to be like near the top of the list. Yeah. It didn't make the, the, the top ten over there. But, and I think one thing I'm curious about as we talk about density and we talk about everything else, do we have statistics to back up the fact that people are moving away from kind of two-car type of arrangement? In other words, I have an anecdotal feeling that people try hard not to have many cars now, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess you, you see how people live, they ride their bikes, they take public transit, um, everything else, especially if you're right along the spine, either Broadway or, or Mass Ave. But the parking study that happened, as well as other things, it, is there is there data to back up that kind of gut feeling a, I have? Arlington is a member of the 128 Business Council, and they did a survey for us this year of Arlington's transportation practices and habits, Arlington residents and commuters. Um, 
and that's on the website. I don't have it with me, yeah. but it is on the website, it is. so okay. you can see the results. It, it just seems like, what is, what is it, 500, uh, one park, it's about 500 square feet or something like that. I mean, it, it, it's, it doesn't seem like the ratio is right anymore. I, I agree. So, I, I think, um, like so many metro Boston community, you know, uh, suburbs, our bylaw was generated at, at a time 40 years ago. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Car was king. Yeah. I think our habits have changed, and our parking requirements are absolutely a restriction on development. Absolutely. They, yeah. they, there's no question our parking requirements restrict development in Arlington. When you and compare they are ours excessive. To they're it's more than what the market are. I'm, I'm, you know, I shouldn't make a blanket statement, but in, in some uses in the bylaw, we require more parking than the market wants. So I think an important part of this process when we, you know, before the hearing, you know, everything is, is that kind of, what are the neighbors doing? You know, what are the neighbor towns doing with respect to that? Or what have they done? What are, what are, what are the metrics that people are using for parking now? That's going to be important for us to be able to have, I think, at hand. Because I think that, I think that as we talk about density and we talk about those types of things, that issue, I mean, along with height and, you know, what it looks like, I, I think people will trust that a little bit because we can talk about like the three or four story buildings that line Mass Ave right now and that's nice. I mean you got different heights, you got different, you know, architectures. I think I think everyone can probably wrap their heads around that it's not gonna be this kind of, you know, kind of just monolith, you know, canyon going down. Um, but I don't think they're gonna necessarily be able to wrap their heads around uh, parking. For and remember we're not just talking about Mass Ave. We're talking about Broadway. Correct, and that's what I meant. I meant the main spines. Yeah, the main spines one. is what I was thinking. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, Broadway and obviously. Yeah. There are. There is a um, recommendation to consider a parking study in East Arlington to determine whether there is a parking deficiency, and to develop strategies to improve parking management in the area. So that that's one example of a, a, a parking recommendation. There are. Um, I could go through the. I'm almost less concerned about. I mean, I myself, I'm less, a little, I'm a little less concerned about um, about uh, recommendations because I mean that makes sense, and I, I don't know what we're going to be able to do in East Arlington specifically. I mean, you know, you can talk about the Russell uh, Russell lot and maybe things you could do there uh, or something. I think East Arlington's a little tougher, um, but in my mind, it's more about kind of convincing people or showing people that the way that people approach transportation and cars in Arlington has changed and you know maybe it's looking at what you know I don't know whether Somerville has changed theirs or you know some of the more right. dense like Cambridge, Cambridge or Medford or what are they know, using now what are they using now as you know or what what's recommended it just seems like if we don't get ourselves away from the you know X number of feet per car or, or one car per X number of feet, especially at 500. I mean, that just seems very small. So point. you're you're interested in? Um, it sounds like you're interested in the results of that parking st uh, that um, transportation study. To yeah, the extent that that's... it might comment on how many cars a household has. Yeah, has yeah, or certainly. Or are you talking about benchmarking? It's both the, it's both benchmarking and that study. I think I think it's also benchmarking I to understand that, what people do. don't. That's you? a really helpful thing to do. I would second that. Yeah, you know, like you just have to see how other towns did it. And if we have to break out on our what, own, well, that's fine. That you, but we better you understand want us we're to doing study that. that other towns well, it done. depends on what the issue is. So you go from parking to density. But just let's stick on parking for a second. Park, okay, are so. you looking to see what other communities have done to change their parking requirements? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. See, and just a comparison. What is Cambridge calling for? But the, you understand the master plan isn't going to change our parking. No, I, okay. I do understand that, that right. that'll be a part of implementation as we kind of talk through these so things. But saying. if we're talking about more density, then we have to, as a corollary to that, or as an adjunct to that, be able to say, and as far as parking goes, folks, you know, yes, we're asking for more density, but understand that our bylaws are a little out of date with respect to the, the parking requirements. And therefore, although, this might seem like it'll require a lot more parking. If you look at 
you know, the overall usage of public transit and everything else, it actually should not have the, the really tough effect that we think it might otherwise have. I don't know. I mean, I, I think we need something at yeah, the ready. If there are other projects we can point to that happen in other towns, that might be helpful to Yeah. Although I think that, that might be kind of getting ahead, because um, you, you don't really need that. It would, the, the data that we got from the transportation study that Route 128 did is available, and that, if it isn't, I believe it is actually cited in the, in the plan. If it isn't, it should be, and um, should actually I think, be an appendix to this. Okay. Um, so that we, we can present, here's a snapshot, it's, you know, one slice of what current Arlington resident transportation commute to work practices are. Mm -hmm. that, but that's, that doesn't completely get at how many cars, we I shouldn't. There's a question on how many cars people have. We shouldn't need the real specifics, but in generalities. Because the real specifics are going to come out when the zoning <coughs> bylaws are looked at, when all the density charts are looked at, and that's not the master plan. Yeah. That's what Carol's trying to say, I think, right, Carol? No, and, and, but I think unless you specific. have, if unless you have in your back pocket something other than, well, don't worry about the density. Because, something general. Yeah, something to be able to say, mm -hmm. well, you know, our, our parking's already out of whack. Right. And we need to correct it regardless. So, so that's all. You know, maybe that it's out of whack of by, you know, a certain percentage so compared some to surrounding can make a communities. Judgment. Yeah, is enough. because then they're just not thinking about density as more parking. Right, right. right. And also, just you mentioned to make a judgment that's not going to be a corridor with high buildings on both sides, and it won't even be high everywhere. Right. I, I would. I, I mean, I would imagine that that it's it's somewhere between. You know. Mm -hmm where we have the opportunity to have more density, like we have in the centers. I mean, right now we have high in, in the center, and then maybe a little high in the, in the capital district, then high in the center, low, 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 a few little bumps, and then high in the, in the Arlington Heights. And over time, we can figure out where we want to allow more double-loaded, more, more, more intense development. But we still want to keep, I would imagine, at least my opinion, some of the open space and the feeling that it's, it's not a, a real city. It's still kind of between a city and a suburb. But even just some of the things like allowing infill in areas, taking some of the residential properties that are right beside commercial areas yes. along Mass Ave and allowing those to be converted to a different use so that's more, more right. commercial or mm -hmm. business oriented, that has mixed use. That helps to infill some of that. Yes. Yeah. That's, I think it's less that's increasing density. density. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's not necessarily going up. Well, that's at what I'm all. wondering if there's a way that can reduce that so that people understand that it's not. Right. It might be going, going back and making the lots, the lot coverage requirements not as stringent and the parking not as stringent. In many ways, it is mixed use already when you go up Mass Ave and look at all those big old houses there. Yeah. Our office That's right. The medical That's right. The B1s right. already. Right. There aren't many yep. people living in there with kids. That's right. That's right. Right. Yeah. And even what we do with the, the Mill Brook Corridor, coming up with design standards, you know, like allowing access, public access along the corridor right. in key places. And right. You know what the buildings will be like there, what the density will be like there. That whole writing up all of that will come later. I see. But just suggesting that we need to do that is what's in the master plan. Is that, is Having that, the big vision that yes, that's something important. I didn't to the see town. that. Yeah, but I'm sure. There, there is a recommendation in there. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it, buried. You know, I looked for it I in see, land I use. I saw the Millbrook, but I you didn't don't see get to it until open space and recreation. I, did, I saw Millbrook, but be. not Millbrook district. One Nothing. of the things we need to do is yeah, to make the sure term isn't right. The, the, term, the is, term still isn't right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because there, we've created a district. There, there are two things. There's the Mill yeah. Brook, which is itself a great asset, mm -hmm. and there's the potential in that zone that we identified of where a lot of our industrial properties and also future large sites are located right. to provide a special attention. And the committee spent a lot of time on that, I think, mm -hmm. thinking they? about what could happen there and visualizing it a little bit with the consultants. And yeah, it's, I don't think it belongs in the open space and recreation. No. It's going to be one of my the Millbrook, oh, well, the Millbrook should district should be an economic development. Or everywhere. Also it could be in land use. But it, it feels like it needs to come 
forward. Yes. Where yeah. the corridor is more the recreation and linear park. Right. And that's and part of the park. district. Yeah. The corridor but is part of the district. Well. That's the it's open longer, area. Yeah. That's open space. That's, that's open space. That's open space. Yeah. But that right now, the, the whole mixed use uh, See, it kind of district is buried in that open space. Because it kind of bridges section. everything. Because it's yeah. got public space, it's got historical aspects. It's yeah, got and that is not aspects. highlighted well at all right now in the master plan. Yeah. It's a work. It's, yeah, that's. Oh, we'll make it. I mean, we make yeah. These are constructive comments. Oh, no, these are, <laughs> this is an amazing document. Yeah, it really is. It is. Yeah, it's a first cut. Yeah. yeah. So. And it's, it's not clear on the website, too, that all the charts and stuff are missing since we're on TV. Maybe somebody wants to explain that all this is a draft that's going to be yeah. put into we'll a different answers. computer program, and then all the color graphics and everything and all that stuff will be added. <clears throat> Some of the previous working papers had all that stuff in it, and you've noticed maybe that now it's just black and white and just text. One of the things we did too is go back in time and look at the 1926 master plan, which I think was the last wow. formal master plan that was done. It was done by Charles Elliott, who's a professor of public. And um, it was pre-automobile, um, so it was interesting to see his vision of what Arlington would evolve into, having a train station subway stop in Arlington Center, realigning streets, um, a parkway along Spy Pond. I think he had some vision that the automobile was coming, but didn't know to what extent it would come. Mm -hmm. And so I, one of the things we challenge the, cons the consultant with is think a little more broadly about the role technology will play 10, 20, 30 years from now. I mean, the younger generation, who would have thought about Uber or Lyft yeah. um, as a tra means of transportation <coughs> even three, four years ago? And so that ha could have a profound impact in terms of how we uh, move about more on-demand transportation as opposed to having to own a car. Right. Great. Um, that's to his point. Yeah, yeah that's right. to exactly to the point. Right. right. Now. That's exactly but, right. But that's something we really Better. Need to push the consultant on is, again, looking back 1926 to 2014, you know, we should be looking ahead at least 30 years yeah. of what may be happening. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not in there yet either. No. Yeah. That's a tough one. Well, no, but I think it's, I, I, I agree. I it's mean, the role it, it, of technology. Yeah. And it explains a lot of what you want with respect to density and everything else. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's you're close it's to the good. city, and, yeah. you know, there's, there's a different way of traveling now because of that. So. And this is supposed to be our vision yeah. for the town, for the future, so. Well, the way technology changes things every five years, I mean, like I said, wow. What other concerns do you think we're going to hear from residents at the hearing? Well, Things you've been seeing in comments. I, I think housing will be an issue as well. Yeah, okay. um, the affordability is yeah. a, a major concern for mm -hmm. um, people who are renting right now, knowing that the price of real estate is increasing faster than the Boston region as a whole, which means rents go up. And I think that's a, a problem for people who have lived here for a long time. Um, how we tackle that is going to be a, yeah. a big issue yeah. as well. So and that's again where the mixed use development may come into play with uh, studio one bedroom apartments that are more affordable. A redevelopment of single family houses where people can age in place, what we tried to do with the in level. Accessory apartments. Accessory apartments. Accessory yeah. apartments. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think if that comes up again now in the future, maybe it needs to be looked at a little more seriously by town meeting and not looked at it seriously. But yeah, I, yeah. Hopefully more favorably. That might be a little too line. tactical for this, though, right? I mean, this would, that would make it into the plan. It's in the plan, right? Oh, it is. There's a recommendation that it's a very good way to increase affordable housing. Interesting. It doesn't count as affordable housing, but it's a good way to increase it without it also increasing density. Aging in place. It has very little impact on existing residential areas. It may be that the bylaws the as section. drafted that went before town meeting weren't the right fit right. for Arlington. Exactly.
maybe we need to look at it closer and see yeah, get more creative. what we can change. So just consider that in the future. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, so that was a recommendation to reconsider that. Okay. As far as public facilities goes, um, the town owns quite a few buildings. The question yeah. is, does it really need to own all the buildings? Are we using them efficiently? Are we maintaining them? Um, efficiently as well. I think that the town um, is doing an excellent job with the resources that they have. Um, but I think we have to look at future space needs as well. Um, we've gone back to the consultant again to look at the projections for school age children um, because we don't know whether we have enough space in the school system as well. So we're looking at that as well. Did the consultants have any recommendations on our cemetery dilemma? Um, it's, it's, it's an item. In there, no, so it's an item to yeah. it's to reckon with. It, yes. to deal with it. Have no specific <laughs> recommendations. That's a hard one. Yeah, develop a plan to address cemetery needs. I think is what it was. We've tried a few things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think every town's grappling with this. Yeah. As well. Maybe somehow can be worked into the redevelopment of the <laughs> We tried that. Uh, well, uh, yeah, we tried it, but maybe. It might not. In a different way. Different place. In a maybe different place, different place that I isn't think you would have. developed yet into a yeah. park. <laughs> it's all open space. Though, Potentially. So. It's still open space, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. This is great. That was yeah. a great yeah, document. You. Really appreciate it. Appreciate all the hard work. That's for sure. There, there are, as you're continuing to look at it, if there are any recommendations or um, implementation action steps that you have questions about or concerns, make comments. Or you can. Um, the committee meets next on December fourth. Okay. So um, please do. If, if if you see anything that you uh, have a question about, you can ask me. I can convey it to the committee uh, and the consultant. But do get your input, and we want to make sure you have concerns that they're addressed early. Yeah. Input by well. December first, though. I mm -hmm. Yes. And I think we should point out too that Christine's been coming to majority of the meetings yeah. and providing input throughout the process. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, input. thank Not you. Not a whole lot of written input, but a lot of verbal. <laughs> and I think it's been very helpful. So that's thank great. You. We we appreciate it. That's for sure. Yeah, and it was nice to see all of you guys at the last one. Well, that's that was great. Also. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming in. We'll be going to the um, Parks and Recreation Commission to um, talk to them about the master plan on November 25th. Oh, good. Good. Nice. And some other boards and committees, board selectmen. Um, they had a lot of comments, board. right? The Parks and Rec Commission. Yes, they did. And so that's good. We want to make sure that they're addressed. Yeah. Very good. One other thing that yeah, I hear, and uh, that's because of people I hang around with, yeah. but the, uh, a lot of seniors feel as though they're being shortchanged in a lot of ways in terms of a facility or a place to go, or whatever, and since uh, what's going on in back here, they feel as though we're being pushed around a little bit and so forth, and so uh, that comes up every now and then, and I kind of urge that we uh, include something in here, some mention of something to do with it. Right. somehow address some of those issues. And some of that is in there. I read something in there. Yeah, yeah. About how important it is to yeah. address issues of aging, not just aging in place in your home, but facilities that are needed. And What's interesting is what we've found, too, in, in a lot of the public meetings, there are older people who are moving from the outer suburbs into Arlington. Yeah. They may not want to come all the way into all Cambridge the way to or Boston, yeah. but this is... Okay. Mm halfway point mm -hmm. and we may see actually an increase in the number of That's older yeah, that people as well. And the other thing is that the young professionals are the ones that are now in Cambridge are some of them dating, get married and have kids and it's this is just kind of within reach and it's you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I see that in some of the neighborhoods and that's where they that's but where they came out. We have a lot of people here that have been here less than ten years. I think that was in one of Barbara's articles. Probably mm -hmm. also she does a nice job with us. Yeah. She really is. But, but they're worth reading. Yeah. They're kind oh, of. Oh, yeah. Those are great. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
get to some of the controversial points. Yeah, the headlines. The next one that will be in the advocate is on um, open uh, historical resource areas. Correct. That is out. I saw that. It's online already. Okay. Because yeah, I went to the website this, the this afternoon and it was up there. So one more. Last okay. one's public I facilities, I think, isn't it? No, I think we did public facilities anyway. She's not going in order? Mm -hmm. Didn't she do one on public facilities? For some reason, I read something. Maybe it wasn't good. Something else. I don't think it was good. Well, thank you both. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you guys. I've had a bit of a last time. Thank you. It's a young type 360 now. A little bit. Yeah. I have one of those. Okay. 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 Anybody have any other? So, Arlington 360, Carol, do you want to start on that one? Yes. Neighborhood Protection Plan. an account. Collecting interest. Um, the Neighborhood Protection Plan made a provision for fines to be collected when there were violations of um, the Neighborhood Protection Plan. So there's $26,250 on account and it's the board's um, obligation to dis um, distribute those funds and uh, I suggest that the board, I, I provided to you the original 2001 <coughs> official policy statement of the town, of the Board of Selectmen, on the um, Sims debt exclusion. And one of the, the goals of the town was open space, on, to protect on-site open space. So for that reason, I'm recommending that the board consider devoting these funds or, or a portion of the funds to the Sims Stewardship Fund, which is described in the management plan for Sims. Uh, it provides for uh, maintaining and monitoring the uh, conservation and, and uh, conservation easement. And there is uh, $30,000 that was provided according to the uh, in terms of the special permit and the uh, the documents that flowed from the special permit about the conservation area, uh, there's thirty thousand dollars on account, and so I'm suggesting that because this is a, a, a labor intensive and resource intensive task, I'm suggesting that that go to that stewardship fund, um, not to create something new or a new relationship or a new administrative. Um, structure or organization, but just to devote it to that purpose. Um, other purposes you might consider um, affordable housing, because that was also an objective of the Sims uh, Urban Renewal Project. Um, you have an email that I forwarded to you from some of the abutters who uh, would like the board to consider um, the fines being used for uh, screening uh, of three properties. Uh, I distributed that to you. Uh, I don't have too much more to say about it. I think it speaks for itself. It's self-explanatory. They ask for um, arborvitae or a fence to be put up. I, I feel, in my opinion, that it's the board. It's always the board's duty to consider the um, the real purposes of a uh, purposes of a project and also to consider the greater public good. Uh, so, I, I hope you'll consider. The, the purposes of the Sims uh, 
urban renewal project and the debt exclusion. And there are some outstanding issues um, still with the developer that are being addressed. Right, you had some conversations with Mike. Right, one of the issues that's still being worked out is you're aware that the lights on Sims Road are brighter than they were supposed to be according to photometrics. Uh, Mike Burns, uh, building inspector and zoning enforcement officer, has been working with the developer and very insistent that the lights be changed out to meet those, um, the photometrics that were provided for Brightview and for Arlington 360. And I have faith that he's still very determined to make that right. Uh, I think if, I should actually say when that happens, because I do believe it will, that should go to, um, that should really address the abutters' concerns, because it is the lights that these abutters are uh, concerned about screening. And the lights are bright. Mm -hmm. So I feel that it would be ideal if all of the lights on Sims Road were brought down to the photometrics that were approved. That would satisfy everyone's interests. There are also some landscaping um, concerns that are not specifically conditions of the special permit, but they were things that the developer that Arlington 360 agreed to do. For example, um, do you have the, have the list. list there? So there's a not lead mitigation plan. I don't know if you guys remember at the lower Vista mm -hmm. Park on the slope there. There's not lead, and it's a three-year aggressive plan. So hopefully they started it this fall, which is, I believe, what the consultant would have recommended. They couldn't do it at the time when the not lead was seen. So we, all these items we need to find out from the developer, mm -hmm. whether these have been addressed. Um, installation and approval of boundary markers for the conservation easement areas. Replacement of failed screening plantings. Uh, you may have gone up there and seen some browned out evergreens that are now just gone. So some of those maybe haven't been replaced yet. Uh, replacement of other failed park plantings, both in the lower, mostly in the lower Vista Park, I believe. I think the upper Vista Park is probably fine. Um, replacement of failed plantings in the trailer restoration area. And there I didn't know there were any failed plantings, so there must be some down there. These are all items that we didn't specifically have conditions on, um, but they all certainly need to be addressed. And whether we address them directly with the developer or bring the developer back in, if they're not being addressed. I think they all should have been addressed by now. So if they haven't been, didn't we we may be at the point to bring in the developer. We Didn't we what? Keep oh. some money for... I thought we kept some money for a few of these things. Remember when we released the... Yeah. Um, we did keep some money. Yeah. Yeah, so... But they but the, the don't want it to go on forever. Right. It and needs to be done. No, I know. Well, right. I mean... Well, now it's probably too late, but <clears throat> in the spring, I would assume that we'd use whatever money we kept and do it ourselves. And this is what we said for last spring. Home. Well, the, um, multi, the, the non rate eradication is a multi-year. Yes, I remember that, that one. That's yeah. where they pulled it and they didn't move it and they didn't they couldn't move it because you're not supposed to. I, I, I remember all that. I mean, that one's a little different. Uh, the other ones, I should think that, I mean, I think we kept a good amount of money, so I should think that that would be enough to... Yeah to deal with those I'm not sure items. why they, they didn't address it but, last spring. But this, regardless, this I mean, that, that, that doesn't really happen. have any impact on the MPP anyway. Um, it doesn't, because those are all separate items. Yeah. And that is kind of the point that doing anything with the lights is also a separate Agreed. item that's a requirement of the developer to do. It shouldn't be something that the fines are necessarily used for. The reason I'm bringing them up in the same conversation is what I thought it was um, appropriate because the abutters do have some interest in making sure that the, the, some of these things are, these remaining things are addressed, I, I wanted the board to be aware of any, uh, the status of these um, punch list items that still aren't addressed. Right. But it doesn't relate to the uh, MPP money. No, it doesn't. O but only, I, I just wanted to be sure that if, um, because a butter is brought up on a, a, a butter issue, um, that is related to a punch list item, 
the lights. Right. I thought that there might be some interest yeah. in knowing what the rest of the punch list items are. Yeah, the neighbors that are listening out there may also have noticed the trees are missing and plantings aren't finished. And that there's other items. So maybe it would make sense to bring Jake back. I think it might make sense to have him come back and tell us what his plan is for. I'm sure you're going to get Jake back, but well, could try. Somebody. <laughs> somebody from the developer team to find out what progress they've made, because you know, we're assuming none of these have been done. Maybe some of it has been done. I know ALT and the Conservation Commission maybe are keeping a close eye on it also to find out what has and hasn't been done. The Arborist report was finally done. And it's almost time now for the annual report to be due. <laughs> so it'll be another report mm, yeah. um, due coming out shortly. Team. Yeah, so the Neighborhood Protection Plan funds, uh, we could discuss that tonight and see whether we want to distribute that to, to, the, to the maintenance, the ongoing maintenance. Now, remember, they have the 30000 They also have 10000 um, it was the initial 30, and then later there was 10 that was added to that for the SimCR monitoring contribution. So they actually have 40. Um, we could give them the other 26, 250 into that well, same fund that can be managed. Can yeah. I ask one question? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, what, is, what are some of the alternatives for uh, affordable housing, Carol? What, what funds are out there? Uh, there's the Housing Corporation of Arlington. Okay. Um, there are independent nonprofit that's produced a lot of subsidized affordable yeah. housing in Arlington, um, the Housing Authority. Okay. When do these funds have to be distributed or there allocated? Is. Now? There is no time limit. There's no time limit, there but really there's no reason not to allocate hold them. them if right. you don't have to. Why wouldn't you hold them? Why would you hold them if you want? Well, Why would you hold them? Why not let them do their work? So there's no, there's no reason to have any funds available for neighborhood protection that the building's built. No, the neighborhood protection is yeah, all construction, yeah. Okay, so we have to, okay. And the punch list items are, like we said, a separate, a separate issue that needs to be dealt with as punch list items. They're not right, part of, separate from the punch list. they're not part of ongoing maintenance and even if we put this money into the Sims, um, into the conservation easement that the ALT and the Conservation Commission are, are managing. It doesn't go towards the Lower Vista Park or the Upper Vista Park. No, I understand. It's Those are separate so maintenance contracts. How do other conservation lands get funded for maintenance? Um, I don't think they necessarily maybe. do, yeah. I mean, I've got, a little, I've got a little strip of conservation land right across from me, and I'm the one that's maintaining that yeah. at this point, so. Um, Donations to the ALT yeah. and the Concon. I think this is, a, this is a rather wealthy parcel at this point, so. Um, I guess I'd be a little bit curious, uh, you know, I understand there's the Housing Corporation, and I guess I'd, I, if, I, I think, I think it would be a kind of a nice thing to, to maybe split between the two. Um, and, uh, but I'm not sure the housing corporation is necessarily the best vehicle, and I guess I'd love to understand whether there was anything else either. I'm not, I'm not sure, so I guess it's the, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I seem to remember that there was something else that, when I was doing this, I kind of remember us talking about a different affordable housing trust fund. What was that? Yeah. I guess I'd like to understand that a little bit better myself. Yeah, we don't have to make a decision tonight. Yeah, we'll get some more, but we should make a decision sometime. Find out if that's active. Because I do, you know, I, from my own perspective, and I'm sorry, I'll stop hijacking, but, um, you know, I think that putting some money towards the uh, Sims Conservation Area makes sense um, so that it can be endowed well enough so that it will be able to perpetually go on. However, I like the idea of affordable housing being an important part of what was done up there and to be able to take some of that money and put it to good use that way too. Mm -hmm. so I'll try to um, provide the board with as much information on any housing 
I would just be helpful, I think. I, yeah. I would only urge you to, to consider providing resources to whatever organization has been doing the most to produce Correct. the most units. Because that's that's really what's in our interest yeah. is are they producing units of housing? So that information and, you know, would be great to have. Yeah. But the only question there, I guess, is because, I mean, that's probably the um, Arlington Housing Corporation, right? Uh, they, 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 they produce turn a more lot housing of, every year. But can that happen? Can we provide that money to them as a non-town entity? I guess that would be the other thing I'd want to understand. I don't see you why can you provide it. I think it's the the language. Do you have a neighborhood protection plan there? I do. I guess I just that want. I, I would want to go outside the. She's got the. Five hundred dollar fine payable to a town of Arlington entity of the town's choosing. Yeah, town of Arlington entity. When okay, I, I'll double check this. But earlier this year, we checked this. And it, it was considered the interpretation was that it was Arlington community, but would you mind just checking? With I, the not at all. I do not mind at all. I think it's an important. Thank you. Fine point. Because mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, it'd be great to put it to work as to the most productive, the most productive yeah. way, but. And I know um, the ALT thought that the money that they had was good, but it, it wouldn't be enough. Yeah. For a really sustained effort there. That it was they were going to go through it quickly because of what they were tasked with. Okay. Andrew, any? I think we covered it. All set. Okay, so we don't need to make a decision tonight and get that extra information. The ALT is not a town of Arlington Department. Right. So bear that in mind. Ah, that's interesting, yeah. Oh. Although this seems, yeah, although we've already put money into that, so, or required money to go to that, so. Okay. So, okay. all we have left are approval of minutes. Great. Thanks for Bye -bye. Thanks for, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for Thanks. coming. All right. Do you want to start, Mike? Um. Do you have any comments? Changes. Uh, I think just um, about halfway down. On the second page, just about halfway down, it says, Mr. Fitzsimmons said the zoning bylaw is enabling legislation or a restrictive bylaw. Do you see it's about? Yeah, that's not detail. what he said. Mr. Fitzsimmons said the question is whether the zoning bylaw is enabling legislation or a restrictive bylaw. Mm -hmm. Good. That's what he said. And then there was that just a doesn't matter, but on the next page, there's a typo. Um, four paragraphs down, Ms. Sapinski opened the environmental design review. It says environment. Okay. But otherwise, these look great. I mean, I think I, I'd like to point out that Amy's doing it. You're doing a great job keeping the minutes, and then uh, her She does a better job of digesting them. Yeah, than it's I great. Keeping them. Super. <laughs> She's so, so great. I don't have anything. I'm all set. You're all set? Okay, I had a few things. Uh, the top of the second page, Mr. West confirmed and asked for confirmation that all units will be affordable. Shall we strike the first confirmed and? Mm -hmm. Mr. West asked for confirmation that all units will be affordable. Yep. Makes okay. Sense. And then the third paragraph there, Ms. Sapinski commented, okay, I have a few things to be changed there. That's not exactly what I said. Uh, Ms. Sapinski commented that the vegetation along the fence, and then I want to scratch out, should be removed in the 20-foot tall trees. So it should read, Ms. Sapinski commented that the vegetation along the fence in the driveway gives a visual separation between the driveway at 1173 Mass Ave and the adjacent parking lot. So we're just scratching okay. from should down to trees tall trees on the second line. Then I wanted to add a line right after that. All healthy trees should be retained where possible. And then I have another scratch in the last sentence of that paragraph. Um, Ms. Sapinski, then we start the scratch, asked for confirmation that HCA plans to remove one large tree. So scratch that hole. I'm sorry, I was still writing. Can you repeat that please? Second to the last, the last, the last sentence. Second to the last line, but starts with Ms. Sapinski. 
On the Sorry, page, in the same, the paragraph. Paragraph. same paragraph. Same paragraph. Okay. Ms. Spinsky asked for confirmation. Yeah, so at asked, scratch the ask for confirmation that HCA plans to remove one large tree, scratch all of that. So it should just read, Ms. Sapinski requested a plan showing the existing trees that are staying and those being removed. So we're adding and those being removed at the end of the sentence. Okay. Okay, and then if you go down to... I'm sorry, I'm all healthy trees goes in after the phrase parking lot, is that correct? Yes. Okay. All healthy trees should be retained where possible. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sentences up from the bottom, or paragraphs, that starts with Mr. Fitzsimmons. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that was Mr. Fitzsimmons, said the additional parking space would go vacant. I don't remember that being Mr. Fitzsimmons, but was it? Did anybody else remember saying that? Because he was talking about the parking being needed. Based but on he the did say that the, the paradox of what I, I thought it was. Was he, he the one who said, said it? Okay. Irony of the fact that the, the bylaw requires it, but it wouldn't be. Okay, used you're right. He did say something about the it irony. Maybe we should add Mr. Fitzsimmons said that ironically the additional parking space would go vacant. Okay, and then on the last page, the second paragraph that starts with Mr. O'Gwin. Okay. I'd like to, Mr. O'Gwin said, instead of A, Mr. O'Gwin said, I want to insert the insulation used is, and then more energy efficient. The and insulation used uh, is? Is more energy efficient. Okay. And the cost to remove, so add and the, before cost, and then to remove after cost would be about 25000 And then there's two typos in the next paragraph. Mr. Marek asked if there could be a stipulation that if, instead of is, the noise is excessive, the board could impose control and governors. I don't know what governors are. Do you guys know what governors are? I think it is. Is that it correct? Was yeah. Okay, I thought maybe that was a typo. That's it. Excellent job. These hearings are tough. Capture everything. I, I also took the liberty to change Mr. to Ms. in front of Sapinski on the second page. Yeah. No, I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> on the second page? Oh, yeah, there I am. I'll move to approve as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's all we have on our agenda. Does anybody have anything else? Uh, the plan of the landscaping for 1173 is now in my office. So I can provide that to you if you want to take a look at that. Okay. The, um, the trees to, sure. re it's still rolled, it was delivered late this afternoon, not unrolled it, so, but I know it's there. Okay. Okay, okay. great. You want me to stop down and get that? If, if you or I should stop by another day? At your convenience. I just wanted to let you know it was, that um, it's there. That it's now on. Okay. I'll let weekend. you look at it first. Okay. And then I'll stop by, maybe tomorrow. Okay. Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.